The Art of Authentic Intimacy. Hi, I'm Anne Margaret with this week's Sacred Sunday Message to raise the vibration of your body, mind, and spirit. Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. Today we are diving in to a conversation that's a little bit more challenging. Uh, intimacy and authenticity. And so many times with my clients that I'm as my couples coach for for relationships, it's like they're driving their car off a cliff and they deeply love each other and the relationship is just going to shambles, especially in this last year where a lot of couples are spending a lot more time with each other. So today we're going to explore a few different key points to help you stay on track with your relationship a couple relationship hacks uh, and also just understand like what does it mean to truly have a deeply intimate relationship with your partner this could be with your partner this could be with a sibling a family member this could be with a friend or even a work colleague somebody who's a business partner for you so thanks for joining me for this week's sacred sunday and let's dive in all right so Intimacy. If we think about intimacy, what does it mean? What does it mean to have intimacy with someone? And the best definition that I really like that's very, very simple is a freedom in familiarity. To have freedom in familiarity and knowing each other so deeply and having freedom in that. Those two words, freedom and familiarity, is so, so crucial. So what is a trap here with familiarity? I know those of you who have been married a long time or those of you who struggle in relationships with your family members because there's such a familiarity there, you know the trap of familiarity is listening to the person from the past, relating to them from the past and not having an openness or a loving, authentic, authentic uh, receptivity with them because you're too busy thinking about what they've said before, what they did before, and bringing up old pains or traumas, right? That doesn't help any relationship, right? They need to be addressed, but once you address them, to bring them up again is not very helpful, if you haven't noticed. So it is actually how we see and use familiarity that makes all the difference in our relationships. So let's look there. Are we looking at that familiarity as a way to manipulate our friend, our business partner, our romantic interest, our partner, or our family member? Are we using it to manipulate them or are we using it to serve them? So how are we relating to that familiarity? Now, if we look at familiarity, the root has the same root as family. No coincidence there, right? So from the Latin root familia, is where we get these two words, family or familiarity. And in the 15th century is when this root, this word first kind of had its origins. And it was more so to describe servants or property, the things that were familiar, the things that you had. And then around the 16th century, it started evolving more so into like our domestic family, our domestic uh, community of our mother, father, children, etc and our own little inner government in our own families. So this is important to look at because if we think about the origin of the word being related to servants or being related to property, we can use that servant archetype in a very uplifting and enlightening way, or we can use that archetype in a very diminishing or destructive way. So the first question to ask yourself when you're wondering about how to really deepen your intimacy is, how are you relating to your family? How are you seeing them? Are you seeing them as this, this person? Think of one person, okay? I know we have a lot of people that we'd like to deepen the intimacy with, but think of one person and see, like, are you looking them as your servant or are you seeking to serve them? I know that sounds like a tall tale or like a tall order, for some of you, but are you looking at them like they are, you have expectations that they are supposed to do this, 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 and this? Or are you in more of the servant archetype to serve them, to see, to seek out how to understand them more deeply? Also, another way to see it is are you seeing them as your property or are your treasure? Are your treasure? So are you seeing them as like a label or something that you own? 
something that owes you something? Or are you seeking them in a way that you're truly treasuring them? You're truly treasuring them. So in our relationships, we either go about them with a label or as a living thing. For example, when you get married, you get a you get sign a document. There's proof you are now married. This is your husband. Right? But if you treat the marriage as a thing that kind of happened and it's a stamp or a label rather than a living breathing life itself, an entity that needs to be tended to daily, what will happen to that relationship? It will quickly, quickly die. It will quickly stale and it will not thrive. And if you think about this also in your relationship with your sibling, with a family member, with a business partner, if you relate to your work colleague as somebody who has to do this, 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 and this, but there's no growth or there's no um, evolution or life force between the two of you, then there will be assumptions made, there will be expectations that are unfulfilled, which are usually at the root of so much of our discordance with one another. And right now we're staying, you're noticing a different background from me because we're staying with my brother and his family. And he loves plants. He tends to plants daily. He is like an artisan plant sculptor and treats them every single day. But if he didn't do that every single day, and I saw him spraying the plants this morning and taking care of them, it was beautiful. If he didn't do that every day, he wouldn't have the quality of product of that living, breathing, beautiful expression of that particular plant that he does with the daily tending to it. Our relationships are the same way. So let's look at if we want true, authentic partnership with our romantic partner, with our husband, our wife, or, or with, our, with our business partner, with our sibling, with our family member, what is required? And I'm going to talk about four things. So we're going to go through these pretty quickly. But this is what I work with when I work with couples and help them get over or get through, move through the obstacles that they're facing where they're just at each other's throat, where they feel like we can't come back from this. That's not true. Like anybody knows that there is so much sustainability. There's so much life force if we only are able to go to the root and tend to the root with love, with commitment, with authenticity, with accountability, and really prioritizing that life. So let's go there, okay? Because I have seen miracles of people on the brink of divorce who have come to me and we've worked even for three months and at the end of those three months, their relationship is completely different, completely transformed. And there is a reason for that. We're not taught in school how to conflict resolve. We're not taught in school the real difference in the languages that we speak to one another or how people can have different needs or desires or priorities or levels of comfortability or risk. So let's dive in. These four points are four little relationship hacks that I want to give to you today. And if you need more support, reach out to me and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one or with your partner, we'll do that together. Okay. So the four steps are this authenticity, accountability, priority, and love. Let's see those again. Okay. Let's take first authenticity. Authenticity, such a packed word, right? We want the power of that authentic intimacy. We need to be honest. We need to be transparent and vulnerable. And those kind of might feel like, ugh, that's very uncomfortable, right? But if we look at honesty, honesty is not just not telling a lie to them and being honest with them, but it's also honest with yourself. Being honest with yourself not denying that you have needs. You have needs. You have needs. And if you are able to be fully intimate with yourself and recognize what those are, which is one of the most challenging things for couples, is because you almost like you're expecting your partner to guess your needs or assume your needs or be like you would be in the relationship with them. That's a huge trap, right? You guys can relate. So honesty, so critical. Knowing yourself being honest with yourself and of course with your partner with your with the person your relationship with transparency this is 
this is showing your cards, so there's no games. All right, with honesty, there are no lies. With transparency, there are no games, okay? It is showing your cards. It's putting everything on the table. It's having the courage to let it all hang out. And then vulnerability. This is sharing your needs. Like I said, you have to know what those needs are. And no fear is required there, okay? So honesty, no lies. Transparency, no games. And vulnerability, no fear to not let fear dictate the course of that relationship. Have courage. Number two, accountability. So how are you seeing the person? Taking ownership for how you are actually seeing them. Because we don't realize that people show up for us because of how we are seeing them, the lens through which we are seeing the world. And we see the world through a lens that we create through our version of reality, not reality. There is no real world that everybody subscribes to. That is one of the most challenging and exciting parts of our being human. Being in separate form, we all have a different reality based on the thoughts that we think over and over again. And those thoughts form our belief system. And then that belief system shapes our reality. So if we're thinking thoughts about our partner that are disempowering, that are really belittling or disrespectful, we're going to create beliefs about them that are the same, disrespectful, right, and very limiting. And then we'll listen through a filter that limits them so drastically. So accountability, how are you seeing the person? Taking responsibility for how you are filtering them to you. Got it? How are you responsible for the issue at hand? What did you do? It might have not been intentional at all, but it's about taking ownership and for how they were left, even though that's not what you meant at all. And I've done a lot of videos on responsibility, accountability. So go dive in a little bit there because we don't have time to go all through all of these in great detail. But how are you responsible for the issue? So we've got authenticity, accountability. Next is priority. You need to have a balanced investment. Notice I didn't say equal because we hold that. We're like, well, I did this. You need to do this. We have balance, okay? Meaning that sometimes the partner in the relationship is the mother, is take the caretaker, and sometimes the other is the child. And then that role reverses based on whatever we're moving through in our lives. We can't always be the equal that we are desiring because ourselves we are not superhuman we sometimes need that support more so and need to support our partner so balance investment and common relationship goals common relationship values so understanding what those are for one another is so so critical talking about it getting it out of your brain so it's on paper so you both can understand that more deeply also Mars and Venus, we hear like Mars and Venus, we speak different love languages. So seeking to really understand how the other person communicates and supporting them, not to be more like you, but to seek how you can support them and how they communicate. All right. And also their level of risk, their level of investment. How does it work? The comfortability to seek to meet them where they are rather than expecting them to come to you. Consistency, consistent commitment is so crucial, as well as a willingness and a consideration for that other person, all right? That all relates to prioritizing the relationship, prioritizing the other person, and of course, prioritizing yourself without, without saying that. It's so critical. And lastly, this last piece is love. Love being unconditional acceptance. Loving yourself unconditionally and loving them, those two need to be present, that unconditional love and acceptance of yourself and them. This means forgiveness, recognizing that you're not waiting them to earn your forgiveness. You're forgiving them because you are channeling forgiveness and love rather than resentment. You've got to hold on to that inside, right? If you are holding on to that resentment for them. So forgiving yourself, forgiving them, loving yourself, loving them. And then lastly, I'll say, rebuilding trust, rebuilding trust, and not putting your hands on your hips and saying, well, you need to earn my trust again. Yes, of course, that is true. They do need to do whatever they need to do in order to be consistent for you to continue to trust them. But it also, if you're not seeing that as your job of flexing the muscle of trust, 
you're gonna slide into a trap, okay? Putting all the pressure on them and that pressure will eventually crumble because they cannot survive under the weight of that pressure, right? So working together. So remember guys, in order to create that deep intimacy, authenticity, accountability, priority, and love. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. And if you do need support in your own relationship, reach out to me directly, okay? Feel free to share this video. And until next time, keep raising the vibration. All right, love to all of you. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, bye-bye.